everyone, Nicole Cardovis here and I am so excited for my episode today because you guys just asked me a lot of questions which I posted on Instagram a few weeks ago and it's a lot of questions about me. Why am I so excited about it? Because of course, you guys are thinking, since beauty queen, ako, I did a lot of interviews as well and we're always, always talking. Feeling ko kasi those days, we are so well aware that I have to answer this like a beauty queen. It has to be in line with my advocacy. Parang there's all the, these things going on in our heads. So I feel like in my short stay here palang sa YouTube, your community is so ready for honesty. And that's what I'm going to give to you guys today without inhibitions or anything. And I'm so excited to answer your questions about me because my questions are about love life. And since and I, I love talking about it and giving other people advice. I'm gonna answer all your questions today. So, here it goes. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous because I feel like I haven't done something like this before. Walang guards up na talaga or like I don't have an organization to be aware of. Na wait, I have to. Ano, this has to be according to their standards. So. Let's do this! Okay, so first question. A lot of people ask me this and I always answer na, How young am I? I'm 27 years old. So yeah, I'm 27. And a lot of you guys, sa pageant community, tinatanong yun na, ilang taon na ba si Nicole? Pwede pa ba siya sumali ng pageant? The answer is, I think, yeah. Yeah, pwede pa. Pero, pagod na. Ay, wow! <laughs> Pero ano, parang feeling ko kasi my pageant journey before was a stepping stone lang. It's not my ultimate big goal. And what I'm doing now, I love it. Like this is where I always wanted to be. So I don't feel like I need to join pageants anymore in order to continue my vocation um, or to delve into my advocacies or to work. I don't want the crown just so I can have a crown. It always has to have Mas, kailangan may mas malaking purpose pa akong pinaglalaban. More than the title, more than the crown. That's why girls don't just jump into pageantry because it's a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of things you need to give up. You need to stop your life for a minute or two and yeah, be on that journey lang. And you don't know what's gonna happen, diba? But there's no sure win at all until that big night. And you're lucky na lang if you go home with a crown because it's anybody's game, really. And yeah, so no more. Ito na, final na. I will not join a pageant again. <laughs> Sa lahat na comment. <laughs> I am 5 feet 9 inches. I'm a 5'9 stunner. And my shoe size, I am a size 9. So I grew up in one school, and that's Makati Ho Christian School. It's a Chinese school. So in one class, no, in one batch, two sections lang. And in one class, bihira na makareach kami ng 30 students. So that's how small my community was back then. I feel like I was super sheltered. We were living in this bubble. And lagging recycled yun mga crushes namin. Okay, like, yun yung biggest regret namin, I think, as a barkada. Like, ano, bakit ano, siya yung naging crush natin? Eh, kasi wala namang choice. And then, kung may new student, parang everyone's excited na, uy, yun. <laughs> Tapos malaman mo, after two years, parang, di naman siya ganun ka-cute pala. Bakit natin pinaglaban? <laughs> so, yeah, that was my elementary and high school life there. But I enjoyed it a lot. Kasi since small yung community namin nun, we had a lot of opportunities open to us. Like, we can just keep joining these clubs and it's not hard na mapili ka for something. Kasi I know usually sa schools, in one batch, may mga six or seven or ten sections. So parang mas mahirap na i-pinpoint ka ng teacher mo unless you're super in the pilot class and be like, hey, can you join this ano, activity or yung laban sa labas ng school? But since Two sections na nga kami. Wala na sila masyadong choice. <laughs> Pero we always needed to step up. And then, lagi kami, it's hard na, mas mahirap na hindi ka mapili to join an activity. So you really have to be involved in school. So I feel like, growing up in that kind of environment, it has allowed me to excel talaga. Na to unlock lang the potential. Na siguro, hindi ko nakita sa sarili ko back then. Pero dahil may mga teachers ako na nag-push sa akin, Parang kahit hindi ako 
born na matalino or born a leader, I was forced to step up and I'm so happy about that. Like, I owe it to them. I got my degree from Ateneo de Manila University. I was actually supposed to go to La Salle. I wanted to take a double degree course there, which Ateneo doesn't offer. But since in our batch, that's very small, parang 10 lang ata kami pumasa na Ateneo. And I did not think I would be one of them. Kasi I was never consistently on the honor roll. Nakakachamba lang ako pa minsan. Pero very minsan talaga. But I think I wrote one hell of an essay. Alam mo yung entrance essay noon, feeling ko ginalingan ko talaga doon, kaya nakapasok ako. And then, uh, I took economics in Ateneo, and then I applied for a minor degree in development management. So I wanted, kasi economics was so theoretical, I wanted to be able to find a heart, you find the heart of the matter, like how do I apply it? I don't want to just know these theories, I want to get into the field. So development management was all about that, like uh, how you will approach a community, how you will uh, identify the issues, the stakeholders. So I was all about that and I think my pageant journey also has always been about that. I learned to look at advocacies in a very different way, handle communities in a very different way. I think I owe my communication skills mainly to my experience in debate back in high school. This is why you should choose your friends. Because the barcada ko nun, Krisha, she's my power woman actually, and um, she got. Parang it's our common interest. She lagi kong kalaban sa talumpati pag linggo ng wika. Natatalo ako gusto ko yung represent yung class namin. She doesn't know this by the way. Pero she lagi na mas nag excel kesa sa akin because she's so much more goal oriented than me back then. Like kung Mi chacha gapa sa akin siya yon. So she got into debate, I got into debate. So lumakas loob ko sumali in those things. So within the debate competition, you can sign up to do public speaking as well. And they would give you a topic na lang and then on the final night, you would you would deliver your speech and then someone like the board will judge you na lang. So yung feeling ko yung wide range of audiences ko like you said debate and then pageantry. I learned how to talk to different people and that's something that only experience can teach you. Na kahit magset up ako dito ng PowerPoint presentation on how to do it, you wouldn't really know how to do it. So I think that's the uh, one of the best lessons life has ever taught me. Uh, okay. Um, okay, this is hard kasi sa pageantry that time, it's like people don't really know you at all, pero they will jump right into your comment sections. Tapos, magko comment na sila kaagad na, I got comments like, mukhang bakla, mukhang transgender, hin uh, yeah, pretty much yung dalawang yun, mukhang kabayo. Meron pa yun, and it's so mean. Like, so mean. Number one, mas maganda pa sa akin mga bakla transgender. It's insulting to them. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's what I always thought of. Because I don't see myself as a, have someone who has really feminine features. And I don't see myself as super pretty. I feel like I'm okay. Alam mo yon. Pero, like, to get comments like that, I'm, I'm like, what's your goal? Is this more for you? Or is it really for me? Because it's not even constructive criticism. And then there will also be comments na dapat padagdagan pa niya nose niya, uh, para toke siya ng ganito, ganyan. And I'm like, that's super objectification. Yun ang pipil ko na how could you say that to a girl? And then when there's a girl naman who got into a competition and underwent plastic surgery, o olayin din siya na grabe siya, ang dami na niyong pinagawa. Ganun. So, Ano ba talaga? Like, we need to set our standards of beauty straight. But at the end of the day, we can't really change the whole culture of perception here. But the best we can really do is to make our stand. And sometimes, I reply to bashers, not in the comment section all the time. Bihira. More of, I will DM them na how I feel. Lalo na if the bashers are young girls. I have learned to make my own stand. Now, this is not okay with me. I may be a public figure, but you can't just talk to me like that. I'm still a person. So I would approach you with respect, but you know I'm pissed. 
you know I'm pissed, I'm not okay, but I always have a resolution also. Like, if you don't feel nice about it, don't go to my page. If you're going through something, I don't know what it is, I hope you get to work it out in your life, and I just wish you the best. But really, shade. <laughs> my favorite ulam is sinigang in all forms. No, except for watermelon sinigang pala. Or baya bayabas na sinigang? May, is there such a thing? Basta like fruits in sinigang, hindi ko gusto. May mga restaurants kasi who try to be experimental and I'm like, why would you put watermelon in sinigang? So, yung type na yun, ayoko. But currently, I'm very obsessed with sinigang with bagnet on the side. This mang Tomas. Sarap. Okay, a lot of you always ask me about my boyfriend because he's so private. Uh, uh, someone even asked if uh, he's even on social media. He is, but he doesn't post. How did I meet my boyfriend? Okay, so I was single. I only ha ever had one other relationship in college that was uh, not good. It was illegal. I owe the parents ko kasi pack namin is after college, you can do whatever you want, but you just have to prioritize your studies now. I think kids listen to your parents. I swear you would spare yourself from unreasonable heartbreak. When I met Robin, at what, I was at a phase in my life where I knew where I wanted to be, I knew what I wanted to do, and I felt more complete. I felt like I was more, I knew myself more. So when he came into my life, it was just perfect. What happened was, I was coming from Tondo. From I was spending time lang with the kids and the families. And I went back to my house. I jeep a jeep and I LRT a LRT. Usually, kasi, pagka QC I was And then, I would meet up the college barcada ko in Makati. That was in Salcedo. Pa nun. Usually, out ako. Mangi Indian talaga ako kasi sobrang pagod na ako. And, that time, kasi, this was after Miss Chinatown and before Binibining Pilipinas. So, a lot of people don't know that Robin has always been there already for me. Uh, tapos, for some reason, naligo ako kahit na basabuhok ko. I got into my car, hindi ako mga injan. Hindi ako pinilit ng friends ko na wag mga injan. Sabi ko pa, I'll be late. Is that okay? So, sabi nila, no, it's okay. We'll, uh, we'll wait for you na lang for coffee. At least dinner done na. Tapos, I went there. I was stuck in traffic in Makati Ave. I remember that clearly. And I was like, I don't know why, but I feel like there's something special gonna happen tonight. I don't know. I just had that feeling na something that night's gonna be wonderful. Tapos, when I got to, to Coffee Bean, my friend was there with her boyfriend. They're both lawyers now also. Sabi niya sa akin na friend ko na, is it okay if if our classmate picks up some handouts from me, like some notes, he'll just drop by. And I was like, why are you asking my permission? Of course, it's okay. And I didn't even think to ask na cute ba siya? Because usually, hindi naman cute yung mga friends ng friends mo. <laughs> like, hindi mo naman type. So, <laughs> I didn't bother to ask. Like, okay, fine. That's, that's a non-issue. Like, okay. Tapos, so her boyfriend, we were talking, and then her boyfriend went in and with her, with their classmate, which was Robin. And then, uh, inisip ko, oh nga, hindi nga cute. Kasi he had, before he had this slouch pa, he was so nerdy. And yeah, I was, uh, I was like, okay, mission aborted. <laughs> Wala nga talaga. Tapos, they sat down, and then nagulat ako. Rob also sat down, and then he removed his glasses. Like I was just like this moment. He removed his glasses, looked at me, and it's like I was like, oh my gosh, he kind of looks like Adam Levine. <laughs> no, but like, I was like, oi, guapo. Tapos hindi ko siya masadong kina ka usap kasi you won't believe this, but I'm scared of talking to boys. Like, I don't handle myself well. And I always have this whole wall up, so I can't, yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> so, he was just there, was listening to me, and I had to leave because my curfew was at like 11 o'clock. My dad was texting me, na, hey, come home, night's late. So, I had to drive myself back all the way uh, home, and then uh, I texted my friend. I was like, so, your friend. 
Tapos, um, my friend was like, pretending pa na there was nothing there. Like, oh, you like him? Ganun sa ko. Well, he looks good. He looks like Adam Levine. So, uh, I think, they were coordinating with him as well. And my friend's boyfriend told Rob na, add her on Facebook, pero wait for a few days. Pero that night, he added me ka agad. Okay. Hindi <laughs> So I was like, oh, he likes me back. <laughs> so, um, akala ko destiny yun. Kasi diba, may naramdaman ako noon na something special is gonna happen. And then I do, uh, I'm attracted to this guy, diba? So, set up pala yun, all along. <laughs> like, matagal na niya kinukulot yung friends ko na, Uy, Miss Chinatown siya, di ba? But can you, ano, I wanna meet her, ganon. And he just came from dinner with his dad pa that time, so. So, yeah, what I thought was destiny was actually a setup. But I'm so glad for it. So, that, na, that happened. And then the rest, as they say, is history. So, that's how Rob and I met. This question kasi came from Doc Arnold, who's my friend, and he knows na Robin's a lawyer, so yeah, thanks for the question, Doc. Pero I don't know, I, w I don't want to generalize lawyers, but you experience ko lang with Robin, I guess, like how we dated and everything. I think, I think lang, they're very calculating. Like every outcome, na analyze nila kaagad. There's a system in their way of thinking, na rationalize nila. Siguro that's a way of if they handle cases kasi okay this can go this way this can go this other way so they're very rational in that sense and i think you cannot you can hindi mo sila kaya pa ikutin at all so you can't go crazy you can't be super out there na out of the blue you feel this so you're going to act out like this i feel like mahawaan ka rin. Di ba in a relationship, nagkakahawaan kayo na ugali and everything. So, mahawa ka sa calmness nila and, and rationalization, their rational behavior. Parang everything is well thought of. They don't just act out like that. That's my experience anyway. And, oh, most important thing about if you're gonna date a lawyer, if you decide to date a lawyer, Give them a lot of time. I've been with Rob since he was a law student palang. And even on weekends, he would still study. And until now, in the firm, he would still work on weekends. So even if the weekend is all the time we really have for each other, I have learned to understand the demands of his job. You really have to give them space because dapat alam mo talaga yung pinapasukan mo na this person will not have all the time in the world for you. So it's also good if in your career path, you're also busy. Because then you won't be clingy. I think that's why we really hit it off. Like, it got our relationship working. We're almost four years in uh, on October. So I guess that was the key. Although it was hard, though. it was really hard. But just like in any other relationship, if you get too busy, your schedules get too hectic, it's really important to see kung bumubawi sa you yung tao. Like kung nagkaroon siya na free time, dadalhin ka ba niya out of town? Will he ask you to have an to go on an adventure with him? Would you travel together? Would he pagka na, he feels like he's going to get burnt out or you're going to get burnt out, will he set time aside for you na okay, I'm going to take a leave so I'm sorry, I'm going to work really hard and really long. Uh, in like two, three weekends para wala na akong gagawing work once na mag-travel tayo or we spend time together. So it's all about your efforts pa rin talaga. So yeah, I think those are the things you need to like have a heads up on when you date a lawyer. Oh, and also, you'll get into a lot of debates. A lot. <laughs> and if, syempre ko lawyers usually they're really informed on current events and you know how polarizing those issues could be. So sometimes I feel like we were, Rob and I hardly fight at all, as in. Pero we would always almost fight on social issues, political issues, because we would get in a very heated debate. Pero since they're so reasonable and rational, nga, um, when you do get into a real fight, sobrang balance. Eh. Like he would, I was surprised. I thought 
Kasi ako, I'm less vocal about my emotions. When I'm angry, when I'm sad, I can't really vocalize it. That's the irony of it. You would think I talk a lot, it'll be easy for me. Pero nabobobo ako once I get feelings. So, I was surprised that every time that we would get into a disagreement, Rob would always have, like, alternate solutions. Like, it's a balance. Parang, he can make sense of things. And he would remain very calm as opposed to me, where I just shut down. So I guess that's another good thing about dating lawyers. The hardest decision I had to make in life, I think since I'm 27 years old, I think this video just came full circle because he started with my age. And I feel like I just entered such a different life cycle right now. I mean, that season, na it's very critical na yung age ko. Before, kasi age was just a number, but now at 27 years old, I feel like every decision I'm making will lead to what kind of life I'm gonna have, which is pretty much deciding the other half of my life. Like, how is the rest of my life? gonna go from here so it's very crucial so before then kasi when I was younger when we were younger when you're this age <laughs> I'm speaking to everyone here don't take your decisions for granted pero before kasi diba parang whatever mistake you make you can just come back from it easily uh, and you would just wait for one thing, one big thing to happen. And that's your sign already na, okay, tama na, mali na to. Pero at this age, it's like going from good to great in the midst of a very stable, very happy, very comfortable life. You have to decide if you want it to become a trajectory. Is this a jump off point or do you want things to stay the same? So the hardest decision I had to make recently was if I'm gonna take a leap, or if I'm gonna stay this way and wait for things to happen. But also, I realize that I'm not that kind of person, or I don't want to be that kind of person as well, na who stays the same always. I always like challenging myself. I always like to be proven wrong in order to see something better. So I had to let go of something that before, I thought I was never gonna get, and I honestly feel like I was so lucky to have that, but I had to let it go to risk seeing something great for myself. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So it's really hard, because what if I never find that again? But then if we keep thinking that way, we will really never find out. And the worst thing that could happen is when you're in that life already, you would want to redo things from today. So that's what I don't want to happen to me. So even if everything's good, everything's okay, it's not even creating problems for myself. I it was it wasn't it was a hard decision because it was letting go of a good thing. In fairness, when I did this, when I let go of something so precious to me recently it was i didn't let go of it dahil napasok na ako or it created problems for me or stress it was letting go because i allowed myself to be disturbed when you're comfortable you feel like you're in this peaceful state nothing can bother you and pwede, you can go on like that like nothing bothers you but i always grew up na make quotes that there's this quote that stuck to me na, let God disturb you. Because that means He has bigger plans for you. And you need to allow yourself to be disturbed so that you can realize these things and you can have enough courage to go out of your comfort zone and seek the bigger purpose, the bigger story, the bigger dream that God wants for you. Because what if your vision was too narrow? What if it was too small? So I allowed, in a way, na, for God to enter into my life and just shake me up. And from here, 
we'll see how it goes. I don't know if it's gonna be like the best decision in my life if I talk to you again five years from now, but when God disturbs you, it's always, uh, there's always a promise of good things coming to you. <laughs> Mga tita, please, wag niyo na ako tanongin kung kailan ako magpapakasal. Pero, uh, it's very important, guys, especially for us women, to set a timeline for ourselves because life won't just keep going on. You have to know uh, when you want to settle down because it will determine what ano career you want for yourself. It will determine your decisions today. It will determine, it will really show you. It will be like a guiding light if you're with the right partner or not because I always believe that you will o you will always find the right one for you if it's the perfect time. So I feel like hindi ka talaga bibigyan ni Lord ng kahit ano, kahit hirap, kahit saya if it's not the perfect time. Kaya dun mo mahanap your reason mo for everything eh. So in marriage, you need to set a timeline for yourself. Hindi man siya masusunod, pero at least you have like an ultimatum of sorts, you have a basis. I thought before na kung mangyayari, mangyayari lang. You know, na parang the feeling will just kick in. But it's really a lot of planning. And imagine naman na, di ba, you're choosing the person who you're gonna be with for the rest of your life. It's like choosing what kind of life you're gonna have for the rest of your life as well. And that's such a big decision because that's gonna make up most of your life. That's when you're gonna become a mom. And grab yung responsibility na yun. And if you're with the wrong partner, it's not gonna work out. Like it's gonna be really hard, but you have to like stick through it. But that's the thing. Before you get into marriage, you have to make sure na you're ready and your partner's ready. So me, my target age is I wanna get engaged by 29 or 30, get married by then, because I really wanna have a family. Like that's me like I'm so excited to be a mom and that's why also I'm doing everything I want to do right now I'm 27 I have two three years more to do everything I want and so much can happen in three years so that by the time na you know I need to really settle down na hindi ako makikipagtagisan sa husband ko no I still want to do this I haven't done this yet Karun, that's why since I have that timeline in mind no ba pressure ko na sarili ko right now to make a decision that I can't be stuck in a crossroad, kailangan gawin ko na to, kasi hindi ko na siya magagawa by this time more or less. If I still get to do it, thank God, you know. If my husband is supportive, thank you. But I know that there will come a time that if I become a mom, I really want to be there for my kids 100% and just be with them. So having that timeline in mind, kahit na hindi masunod, kahit na God says no, kahit He says wait for it lang, wag mo na. At least na prepare mo na sarili mo for that. Like, you have an idea. And it's really important to envision who you want to be in different aspects. Who do I want to be as someone who's single? Who do I want to be if I'm married? Who do I want to be as a mom, as a wife? So you have to really clearly define that. And you need to give them the wins. Like, you need to figure out the when. Yung gamot sa walang love life! Huwag mo muna gamutin. Kung wala ka love life, pero I feel like the best thing that you can do talaga is to prepare for the one. I grew up with people guiding me na you have to pray for your future spouse. You have to prepare yourself also. Ever since I prepared myself in such a way na I want to be a better person every day, I want to learn my lessons, I want to do everything I want to do already, I want to take up this course, that course, my master's degree, I'm deciding all of that now para pag dumating yung time na yun na yung perfect person for you, hindi ka magkukulang. The worst thing that you could think of is sana Nag-prepare ako, sana mas may ginawa pa ako, sana mas marami pa yung may ibibigay ko kasi hindi ko pa maibigay ito sa'yo. Yung ganon, na ang daming sana to the point na the person who was supposed to be the one for you turned out to be the one that got away dahil nagulang ka. So, habang wala ka pang love life, make sure you prepare for that person. If it doesn't work out, it'll work out with the one for you, with the one you end up with, kung sino man yun. So always, and this is also why you need to get into good relationships. 
and not toxic ones. Because even in any breakup, if you guys break up, you know you became a better person for it, and not you didn't learn bad habits from it. Instead, natuto ka maging mas mabuting tao. And I think that's the best thing that you could give to your future partner. So wag niyo madaliin. Wag. Take time to love yourself. A lot. Fall in love really hard sa sarili mo. Sana mahanap mo yung buong buok mong pagkatao. Para pag dumating na yung time na yon, na perfect lahat, ang dami mong pwedeng ibuhos sa kanya. At hindi ka magkukulang. So that wraps it up, guys, for Ask Nicole. I enjoyed answering your questions so much. And if you have more questions to ask me, maybe if you want advice even, just drop them in the comment section below. And if you want to talk about certain topics, let me know as well because we're planning out the next episodes and I want you guys to know me even better as well. And I'm so excited to keep doing this with you guys here on YouTube. So, thank you so much. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because I'll be uploading episodes, I think, almost every week. Basta mapapadalas to, guys. So, hit that bell so you don't have to miss a thing. This has been Nicole Cardovis and nag-iiwan ng kasabihang. <laughs> it is not the crown that makes a queen, but the queen. Who makes the crown? And I thank you. <laughs>